Hey everybody, so we've recorded a video on this topic before. You can figure this out from a simple search of the channel. However, this was among our earliest days and the quality of the recorded video on this topic sounds like it was done so with a potato. And so we're going to do it again. Let's focus on CJC 1295 in combination with Ipamorelin. What are these peptides? Why are they used together? Why is this blend so popular? Let's get into it. But first, I want to give a special shout out to you, my subscribers, for helping me reach a thousand total subs. A year ago, I didn't see this as a possibility, and now that we're here, part of me just wants to keep the train rolling. So if you haven't already, please give us a like and a subscribe. It's the only way to support the channel and making these videos and going back and forth with this awesome community about peptides and research has been a ton of fun. So I'm going to keep making videos, but... Let's do this together. All right, so let's get to this topic. All right, so we'll keep this short and sweet. CJC1295 and Ipamorelin, two really popularly discussed peptides, oftentimes used together. CJC1295, aka DAC, GRF, or Drug Affinity Complex Growth Hormone Releasing Factor, manufactured by a company called Conjugem Biotechnologies. And you'll see that all the peptides they've worked on have this whole CJC in front. It's like their title. It's a modified version of GRF-129, better known as Sermorolin, and thus it acts as an analog of growth hormone releasing hormone. It's got a huge half-life of six to eight days, and it was actually evaluated in clinical trials for lipodystrophy, or essentially accumulated visceral fat, oftentimes present in people who have HIV, and it's actually the indication for use of tesamorelin in treatment of HIV-associated lipodystrophy. However, during clinical trials, one participant, after receiving an 11th injection, unfortunately died. And there hasn't really been much dived into with regards to the cause of death, but as far as I know, the last thing the uh, physician who participated in the trial said was that it likely wasn't due to the compound. However, we don't know for sure if it was directly due or if there is some sort of consequence that we don't know. So like with most of these peptides, we don't know entirely how ipamorelin works. We know there is a component that acts at the ghrelin receptor to increase growth hormone concentration. And in general, in research, it's essentially called a GHRP receptor active growth hormone secretagogue with specificity for GH release, which means broadly speaking, it's good at encouraging release of growth hormone without affecting too many other physiologic processes. For instance, it's been shown that ipamorelin may not have as much of an effect on ACTH and cortisol as does hexarelin. It was developed by Novo Nordisk, which is a huge pharmaceutical company that actually has the rights to semaglutide. So Ozempic, Wegovi, Rebelsis. So you'd be thinking, with the backing of this huge pharmaceutical company, why isn't ipamorelin on the shelves today? And that's because clinical research didn't really show that it could achieve the goal that it was researched to achieve. So ipamorelin was evaluated via clinical trials because some research in rodents show that it may be able to improve gastric motility or help fix postoperative ileus, which is essentially decreased gastric motility or GI movement after surgery, and there was no evidential success. So now you're stuck with people like me talking about it on the internet. So why is this such a popular peptide blend or combination? It's because you have a growth hormone releasing hormone peptide in combination with a growth hormone releasing peptide. So these are pretty much the two uppermost parts of the pathway that take GHRH to GH to IGF-1. And by increasing a lot of these products upstream, you further encourage a favorable environment for release of IGF-1 and those perceived downstream actions of increased lean body mass, weight gain in the sense of ipamorelin quite possibly, better sleep, recovery, repair of tissues, all the stuff that people seek when they use compounds like these. 
I never really knew how to feel with regards to these peptide combinations because I imagine you're creating such a burst of end product that it'll disinhibit production of the upstream product. So I'm wondering how long would it take of use of this peptide blend before you actually just nullify your body's ability to produce GHRH itself. Just some thoughts. The biggest risks I always discuss with these growth hormone releasing peptides is cancer. If you're predisposed or you might have something growing that you don't want growing, encouraging physiologic growth may not be the best thing as it could possibly lead to just uncontrollable growth, prevention of cell death, and just continued replication. And even though discussing the risks may not be as fun as discussing the benefits, they're both worth considering when we're talking about experimental peptides. With the caveat, as always, that this is not medical advice. So, what are your thoughts with regards to these peptides? Anything you want to add with regards to your own research or things you've experienced? I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a like and a subscribe, and you all take care. I'll see you soon in the next video.